Hello everyone, my name is Brooks Page and welcome to our show Money Talks. We have a special guest today, his name is Brooks Muburn and he is going to talk to us about what he's doing at the College and Career Academy and uh, Brooks is the current College and Career Academy CEO. Brooks, welcome to our show. Brooks, uh, it's great to be here as always. Uh, anytime I can associate myself with Brooks Page, uh, oh, I feel honored. So oh my. thank you for having me on the show today. Oh, thank you for being on. All right, Brooks, let's get started. Tell us a little bit about, before we get into the College and Career Academy, a little bit okay. about yourself and what you do in your, little back, in your background, and then we can get into the College and Career Academy. Okay. Uh, my name is Brooks Muber, and I've been in education for 21 years here in the Hart County Charter System. I started out uh, last century, I was one of those teachers that got to teach in both centuries, but I started out at Mount Olive Elementary. Uh, my first year I was a PE teacher, Brooks, and mm-hmm. um, I wasn't a PE major, so just to get a job, I, I took the uh, took the position as a PE teacher there, and after one year, um, I was lucky enough, my principal, Brenda Mays, uh, she got me into the classroom, and so I've been a classroom teacher. I've coached uh, a lot of different sports here in our charter system. I've served as a classroom teacher, a graduation coach at Hart County Middle School and Hart County High School, and uh, also served as assistant principal at Hartwell Elementary. And then I was lucky enough to go back to North Hart Elementary as the principal for three years. And then I'm here now at the College and Career Academy serving as the chief executive officer and also CTA director uh, over the um, over the Career Academy. Okay. So just been very blessed in my career and uh, very excited to see what uh, what's going on there at the okay. Career Academy now. All right. Tell us really about the uh, College and Career Academy, how it's associated and what you do for it as far as matching jobs up with the community, with the businesses in the community. Kind of tell us what your role is there and what the intent and purposes is of the College and Career Academy. Right. Well, really, it's, it's going out into the, the community, into these industries, and finding out what the needs are for uh, for our industries, for our businesses, and really working uh, working with our work-based learning coordinator and our, our counselor, Claudette Gillespie, working with her to try to match those students up with the industries based on uh, the skills, that the specific skills that the, the students have, and also uh, looking and see what our industry needs are uh, and just talking with industry leaders and you know if, if there's an opportunity for an apprentice type opportunity for our students or an intern situation then uh, coming back and, and really recruiting the right kids to get into those jobs and you know who knows uh, it might be a, a part-time job um, just until they get out of high school, but it also may be something that sticks with them as an apprentice where they stay in that industry for 30 years and retire. So just looking at industry needs and coming back and uh, recruiting the right students to go into those positions mm-hmm. is the biggest thing. Yeah, so let's talk about as far as money goes, the salaries that are out there, a range, sure. different kind of jobs. Okay. Tell us kind of what are your what the classes are y'all are teaching at the College and Career Academy. Give people an idea of what, what's going on. Okay. First of all, you know, the, the wages, you know, I've got students that are juniors in high school right now making uh, $14 an hour um, as an apprentice. So, you know, $14 an hour for a 16-year-old uh, student, uh, and, and also getting the, the hands-on training that they'll need also is really big and they're getting uh, a lot of different hours. Sometimes students leave at three o'clock and they work till you know four to eight or in some situations we have kids that leave at 1130. They've already got their credits done at the high school for the day and then they leave there and go work till you know five, six o'clock in the evening mm-hmm. uh, making pretty good money. You talked about the classes that we offer there at the College and Career Academy. We have so many different things that are going on in terms of the classes that we that we offer. You know, we have we have. Uh, I mean, you start with construction. You can go into uh, hospitality, tourism, and marketing. You go into culinary arts. We have agriculture. Uh, we have business, um, drafting, and design. I'm going to leave something out here in a second. Transportation. There's just so many different cosmetology so many different pathways uh, that we offer in each pathway you know look at you look at agriculture you know you got um, you know you've got farming is huge in Hart County mm-hmm. but then also part of agriculture is small animal science and that's where veterinarian school kicks in so mm-hmm. we got so many different pathways to choose from we feel like students have a uh, a great opportunity. We got video production, which is which is huge. We got students right now at the University of Georgia making thirty dollars an hour as a student, mm-hmm. working for either um, 
SEC Network are doing some actually filming for athletic programs at the University of Georgia. So just a lot of great opportunities there for our students. So parents and students that want to specifically get in touch with you if they're not really familiar with this. Sure. Tell me what they need to do to contact you. Or talk. Well, they can email me or call me. I don't mind uh, them calling me straight at the school there. Um, the number there at the, the Career Academy is 706-376-5461. You know, they can call me. Also, uh, Ms. Gillespie, who I mentioned before, is our work-based learning coordinator and our counselor for the Career Academy. Uh, she's always there and, and willing to take calls. I do travel a lot, Brooks, with, with uh, my position, and I knew that when I took the job. You know, I would say 40% of my day or my time, I may be off campus either visiting right. uh, local industry. Um, I've taken a lot of field trips to, to other career academies to try to borrow ideas to bring back to our career academy. So, you know, I'm off campus, you know, I, I go to Rotary luncheons, I go to a lot of different functions, which is very important for my job yeah. and getting out in the community and, and being a face for the career yeah. academy. You spoke at the Kiwanis um, Club recently. Absolutely, the Kiwanis Club. Uh, you asked me to speak a couple months ago, and that's just a great exposure for our Career Academy, getting right. out in the community and, and, and speaking to these industries yeah. and, and these uh, local organizations. Right. But um, if I'm not there, I always get back in touch that's with them, right. uh, just leave me a message. Right. Well, you've done a good job for us. I'm also a member of the uh, Hart County College and Career Academy Board, and uh, Brooks has done a lot of good things. Brooks, let's talk about the specific industries. I know you can't mention all the companies because uh, there's just so many of them, but can you tell us some specific companies here that are really looking for people? I know Nestle Perina's looking. Can you get into that a little bit for us? Yeah, absolutely. And I surely don't want to leave anybody out, but you mentioned Nestle Purina, and um, I took, I had an opportunity to take uh, about 40 students on a field trip to Nestle Purina um, about three weeks ago, and I'm just telling you, it's amazing. I had already been on a, a tour there, uh, but it's just amazing at, at what Nestle Purina is doing and the kind of money that they're investing in our into our community. Um, just having the uh, the ability to show kids and actually take them, because um, I can go back and I can tell them, hey, this is what I saw at Nestle Purina, and I can go back and talk to them all day. I can have a fancy PowerPoint presentation. But if you to, if you can get on a bus and take these kids, these industries that are coming in and just show them what exactly they do mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. what their company is about, you know, what their culture is like, what they're actually producing. You know, our students are like, you mean these begging strips that my that my dog loves to have as a treat, uh, they're, they're, they're going to be produced right here in Hart yeah. County? Um, you know, the, the fancy feast cat food that's already being right. shipped out right now. Um, so, so being able to see that, and Essie Purina is going to grow. They're expanding right. so much. Uh, the production is going to be amazing in the next year or so, just to see what they're going to have to offer. But other industries, certainly, um, herring is going to be a, a huge deal for our uh, for our community over the next you know three to seven years. It's going to be a huge deal, and um, they're located up on uh, exit one seventy seven, and they have not started hiring yet. It'll probably be February of two thousand nineteen before they start really hiring. But you know they make a lot of different things. It's a German automotive mm -hmm. um, industry, and they right now their main focus is to is to produce fuel injector sensors for several different names of uh, vehicles, but. Yeah, that is going to be a huge industry up there with the potential of having six to seven hundred employees over 10 to 12 years. So you're talking about exponential growth there. You know, I, I think about Royston LLC. Um, they, you know, you go to Walmart and you, you check out and you put your groceries on this conveyor belt. And that nice royal blue conveyor belt was made right here in Hart County at Royston LLC. Um, you got Fabritex, Lee Adams, and those guys do a great job at Fabritex. You know, you got Fun Spot. You got so many different opportunities. Ritz is really um, they make um, low, medium, and high voltage transformers. Uh, again, up in the uh, the industrial park up here mm -hmm. at the at the interstate. Linda Vayman is another German automotive plant. Um, they make uh, dashboards for. Uh, Mercedes and BMW, and it's just amazing to see what all these industries have to to offer. And there's probably more. 
I knew I was going to sneeze, so Wes got to <laughs> cut that out. There's just so many. There's just so many things that are going on in our community. Right. Uh, it's just amazing to see, and uh, it's just uh, just great opportunities for our right. for our students. So if you get the students out there in the plant to see what's going on, and they eventually get a job there, they really have a great opportunity if they stick right. with it. Of course, right. everybody gets an entry level job, understands that it, it takes time. So, right. but we got it, we have a, I think we have a great opportunity in the community for some of these big companies, for these uh, students to get involved. And if they can stay in there in the long run, these are just great opportunities. I Absolutely, and that that's kind of the whole plan is, is to get these kids an opportunity based on what it is that their interest and what they love to do. You know, I always tell our students if you can if you can find a job where you feel like you get up every day and you go to work and you think to yourself, I'm getting paid to do this. Like I, I love my job and I love what I do. That's the mindset we want to try to preach to these to these students and and getting them opportunities to go to these local industries and find find that position and talk to them about you know about being about being patient, you know. Um, um, you just you know you're not where you're going to be at 25 mm -hmm. years old. I didn't start teaching until I was 25 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. So I think about the last 20 years and and, and where I, where I've been able to to go and the things I've been able to do. And you know, we try to talk about about kids being patient. Listen, mm -hmm. we're going to get you this apprentice opportunity, and the employer is telling you that if you'll do this, this, and this. This is where you'll be in 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. And for some of them, it's management or supervision. Um, for some of them, it's, it's upper management roles that they can that they can slide into. But there has to be a sense of patience. Um, so that's another thing. It's right. just great opportunities for, for these kids. Right. You know, another great, great thing that just makes me so happy when I see y'all doing this is, is like, you know, when you have sports and athletes getting getting recognition for getting right. scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. And now I see that y'all, when y'all have a, a student that may sign or, or go with a company, that y'all make a big deal out of it that way. And I think that is wonderful. Yeah, we, we did start those industry signing days. And I actually, I had mentioned before that I had been traveling around us on career academies. And, uh, you know, in education, it's all about borrowing ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always try to give people credit when I borrow things. But um, Morgan County High School is, is one to say they uh, they have industry signing days. And you're right when when we have a student athlete who signs a scholarship or wherever to play football or baseball or whatever the sport may be, we have this big signing day and we invite their families to come in and all. And so we started doing that uh, with our with our industries. We have industry signing days where the the uh, student will actually sign a letter of commitment. Uh, to that industry, we've had a couple so far. BNC Mechanical, um, BNC Mechanical is one. Fabrotex is another. I know we've got some other signing days going to coming up in December. Uh, we're going to sign it on with uh, got some kids signing on with McGee Heating and Air. We thank uh, Robert uh, Keesler for that. Mm -hmm. But we've got another signing day coming up in uh, early December uh, that we're going to we're going to do the same thing with. It's just opportunity for these kids to sit behind a camera with their family, with the industry, and it, you know, it just takes a sense right. of pride. Right. And that's what that's what it's about. And, and, and having that letter of commitment that they mm -hmm. sign is huge because they're understanding when they put their name on that dotted line that they're gonna go and they're gonna represent their family, themselves, mm -hmm. and our career academy mm -hmm. the best way they can yeah. in that industry. So that that is a pretty cool thing, yeah. but it, um, it wasn't my idea. I did, I did borrow the idea, but uh, I think it's something that we can just yeah. really grow on. We plan on having those about four times a year oh, so I think that's great. once each quarter so I think great that's thing. absolutely yeah, great absolutely so tell us a little bit about what's, what we both know is extremely important when you go in for these interviews is some soft skills and what these students yeah. and these applicants need to know right. hit on hit on some of those points please well you know when I go to these industries all the time Brooks they're always I said what, what do you need from our kids and I'm gonna be honest with you one of the first things they say is look we just we just want we want, want people that's going to be here. Right. Because, you know, a lot of times uh, in, in different jobs, people don't show up. So just being being at work is huge. Um, and then also, when you're going to be there, we teach this one, one of the biggest soft skills that I harp on all the time to our kids and to my staff is just be on time. Mm -hmm. Be on time. If you have a hard time being on time, you know, set your clock 10, 15 minutes earlier. 
it's important. Um, I, I, I've told my kids all. I tell my kids all the time, and my own personal kids too, that if I showed up to work thirty minutes late every day, I'm quite sure that our superintendent would find another CEO for the College and Career Academy. So, being at work, being on time, and when we go on an interview, you know, I've, I've sat in on several interviews with our with our students at the different places, mm-hmm. um, just because I want to observe you know, their demeanor, what's going on, so I can come back and teach other kids. And we talk about eye contact, maintaining eye contact. When I talk to you, I look at you in the eyes. Right. I don't look at your tie, I don't look above your head, I make eye contact. And the other thing is, you know, you wanna, sometimes you only get one chance to make that first impression. Right. So, you know, dressing nicely, it doesn't always have to be a, uh, a tuxedo, but you know, dress presentable. You wanna, when you walk in, you want people to remember God, I remember what he or she dressed like. Mm-hmm. I remember that they looked at me when I talked to them. And when their interview was over, they had a nice, firm handshake. And we also talk about following up, too. You know, our, all of our students have access to an email. Mm-hmm. So it might be um, emailing the industry leader after the interview and saying, hey, I appreciate your time. Thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to hearing about it from you. So those are just some just some soft skills that we mm-hmm. preach all and, the time. And put up your cell phone. Yeah, put your yeah. cell phone away. Put your cell phone away when you come in the door. You know, we as adults have a hard time with that sometimes. Right. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, Absolutely. But, yeah, that's that's very important because that's just kind of the wave that we're in this 21st century is, you know, just kids, all they're always wanting to be on their, on their cell phone. Right. And then also when, when we set up interviews – I don't call a self the interview. I have students in my office and I, they get their cell phone out and I'll make them do the calling because it's not about me. I've got a job. Right. It's about the students and I have them call and set them up. And a lot of times our students have a, to be honest with you, they have a hard time talking on the telephone these days because right. they're, the new wave That's is right. that they're, they text and they right. do everything this way. But you know, it's all about getting on the phone. You making the contact, setting everything up, and then following through with it. Those That's are just right. some soft skills that I think most kids have have hard times with. Right. But um, that's part of our job, too, is educating our kids on, right. on the employability skills and the soft that's skills right. that they'll need, not only to get the job, to be able to stay in the job as well. Right. Let's uh, talk about some of your great teachers down there. And I know you got a lot of them. We yes, don't sir. want to point any of them out. Uh, right. Uh, but I want to talk, do want to talk about one that's, that's a great one down there. It has a great connection with the students. I know him very well. Uh, his name is Mike Carey, and Mike does an excellent job of connecting with these kids, getting involved with them, and, and staying involved with them even after graduation. But Mike uh, is just a great guy, and, he, and there's many others down there that do the exact same thing, and I don't want to just bring out just Mike, but can you tell me some of the good attributes he has along with your other teachers that do the same thing that Mike does? Well, I, I think the biggest thing that, that separates Mike from a, a lot of teachers um, is, is Mike does a great job of building relationships with kids. Right. Um, and he is, uh, he's got the kids' best interest at heart. And that's the way it should be. Um, I always felt like as a classroom teacher, if I, if I failed to connect to that kid, if I failed to build a relationship with that, with that kid, then I was doing them a disservice and I probably wasn't going to be, uh, very impactful or meaningful to that kid. But Mike Carey does a great job of that. He cares about his kids. He, uh, he kind of cuts up and laughs and goes on with them. But at the same time, um, they know when he's serious, right. he's serious. And there's always a time and place for, for everything. But Mike does a great job of, of connecting with these kids and, and getting them opportunities, you know, after high school, graduation. And um, he, he teaches our construction mm-hmm. class. Mm-hmm. And he also teaches kids uh, about the HVAC systems, uh, a lot of industrial systems type things going on there. He does a lot of, a lot of uh, projects with wood, obviously, with his job. But the biggest thing he does is he builds relationships with right. his kids. And, and, we, and we know you have other teachers that do the same. Oh, absolutely. We have uh, a great department. I've got yeah. 14, uh, 14 great teachers down there at the Career Academy. And, you know, over at the middle school, we've got I've got three three more that fall underneath my umbrella. But um, just um, our teachers do a great job right. of connecting those kids. Right. They provide a lot of opportunities for them. Uh, for field trips, they take them on. Um, they take them on a lot of different, um, you know, agriculture. We, mm-hmm. um, our teachers take them down to Perry for the for the uh, right. for the uh, annual show. They've gone to Indianapolis uh, for the National Ag Convention this year, and you know, it's just a lot of uh, great opportunities through TSA mm-hmm. um, that these students wouldn't have otherwise. Right. But I, but it goes back to building relationships with those kids. Right. 
Okay. That's the biggest reason. I always ask teachers at every level that I that I that I've been in. I've I've taught in every school in the system except for one. Uh, but I always talk to my teachers about if you're not here for the kids, why are you why are you around? Why are you here? Because if you're not here for for what's best for the kids, I don't I don't need you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's so true. Oh yeah. If you got an education for anything other other than making a difference in a kid's life. You're in it for, for the wrong reason. You're there just for a paycheck. Uh, yeah, right that and two months off during the summer. And I don't, that, that's right. That don't jihad with me. That's right. You should be there to build relationships with those yeah, kids. That's, that's what it's all about. Okay. All right. Your students, when they graduate from high school, they've got yeah. some choices to make. They, they can go to college. They can go to technical school. They can go right into the workforce. So tell us a little bit about that and give us some. Uh, give us your opinions on you know how they decide what to do and that kind right. of thing. Right. Well, you know, when we were growing up, um, you know, it was, you know, you got to go to college. You got to go to college. If you don't go to college, you're going to be, you're going to miss the boat. Um, and, and listen, I get that. Um, obviously, in my job, if I didn't have a specialist degree in leadership, I wouldn't be able to, to serve in the role that I, that I am currently. But, you know, in the, in the long run, I had a plan for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but it, it, it's not today. It's not just you got to go to college. My, what I'm trying to talk to our to our parents about is that your kids got a great opportunity without getting a four year degree, um, and I certainly would never talk a kid out of going to the University of Georgia um, or or wherever they they aspire to go, as long as they had a plan for where they wanted to be when they got out. And sometimes it's not making the kid understand that; it's about making their kid their their parents understand that because they feel like, well, if you don't have a four year degree. You're not going to be able to make the money that you want. Mm-hmm. But it is so far from the truth today. Um, it's not even funny because if you look out, if I started on this end and I just I just started here and I just I just wrote out teacher, principal, cosmetologist, veterinarian, and I just named 100 jobs, okay? I could name 67 of them that don't require a four-year degree. The, the the other right. the rest of them the other was it thirty three right the other thirty three percent of the jobs do require a four year degree and I put teachers in that category obviously doctors lawyers veterinarian you know there there are thirty three jobs out of a hundred mm-hmm. that require a four year degree My, mine's one of them right okay if you've got a plan to go to a four year university or four year college or even go to, to technical school and then transfer in. I hope that you've got a plan because we're talking about money talks today. Um, and I'm just telling you, I'm still paying back student loans because <laughs> my wife and I have gone back and got advanced degrees. Right, right. Those advanced degrees are about you know five to ten thousand right. dollars a piece too. Oh yeah. Um, so it's a lot. It's a, it's a huge investment. But I personally have got I've got cousins, one cousin in particular, that's making six figures over in Athens, and he's a plant manager. He never went to college for he didn't go to college for one hour. Great example. Absolutely. You know we've got we've got uh, industries right here in Hart County who have got people that are in leadership roles that they didn't go to college. Right. My mom and dad didn't go to college. But my mom is accounts payable administrator at, at Royston LLC, mm-hmm. making very good money. Mm-hmm. She never went to college. My dad didn't go to college. He's been driving a truck for for 50 years, mm-hmm. a transfer truck. Mm-hmm. But he's the number two senior driver at AutoZone Livonia wow. and making really good money. So there's just a different way to, to get to the end. Right. And I want parents to know today that, you know, if you if your kid is going to college, that is a great thing. I would never, my job is not to talk kids out of going to college. My job is to try to help those students who want to go to college, get where they want to be. But then the ones that come to my office and say, Coach, I'm scared to go to college. What opportunities do we have in Hart County for me? Because right. I don't want to leave Hart County. I love my family. I love my community. I just want to give back here. There are there are countless opportunities Absolutely. for kids that grew up here that want to stay here to make a really good living. Some of them making six figures by the time they're 45 years old and ready for retirement. If you get in the right, if you, if you know the right person and get in at the right time, like these industries coming in right now in Hart County, in Hart County um, it's a great opportunity 
for, for, for my kid, your kid, to be able to get on with those organizations at an early age, mm-hmm. they'll be the industry leaders in, in, in 15 to 20 years mm-hmm. and retire very wealthy. So, um, you know, I think the biggest message out there is just mm-hmm. that finding what fits for the kid. Mm-hmm. Listen, if you want to be a teacher, that's great. There's plenty of opportunities out there. And you'll have to have a four-year degree. Right. What's your plan for it? Right. Okay. I did not have that plan. Right. Okay. I graduated high school. Went to Emmanuel College, went to Gainesville College, went to the University of Georgia, and ended up at Emmanuel College getting a degree in early childhood education. Okay, that wasn't the smartest thing in the world to do because I, I I spun my wheels at different stops, right? And that, every time I spun a wheel, it cost me money. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have that plan. So having that plan, and you know, it's not that the plan can't change. You may get into college and decide, hey, this is not for me. I want to change. That, that's okay, but we want to try to get kids right now. You know, we talk about a six-year plan all the time, starting in the seventh grade. You know, where do you want to be in five, six years? You know, what's your plan? So, I think just parents need to have an open mind about opportunities for the kids, okay. and don't try to live your life through your kids. Like, let your kids. Uh, my 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 own kids may not have the same interest that I did when I come out. Right. 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 So supporting your kids. Um, and trying to find the best opportunity. And my, the last statement, I'll, this is my 30-second elder reader speech real quick. Kids should not be forced to leave Hart County to find a good job unless they just want to leave Hart County. Okay, if you want to leave Hart County, I always tell kids, listen, that's great. Always remember where you come from, okay? Mm-hmm. But our kids shouldn't be forced to leave Hart County because they think that, that we don't have the jobs here. We do have the jobs here. Right. And I think, I, I think, Educating them and helping them understand what we have here is right. is the biggest thing. That's that's my biggest that's my the biggest goal for me in my job. Okay, now. great, okay, yeah. okay. Wes has given me the signal. We're about out of time. Uh, Brooks, tell us if students, parents, whoever would need to contact you to to talk to you specifically about their child or about what's going on. Can you give them your contact information? Do you yeah, doing that? absolutely. My email is b. Mewborn, M E W B O R N, at heart.k12.ga.us. And as again, uh, you can connect me uh, with me uh, by phone at uh, 706 436 1430. That's my personal cell phone. Okay. I love to sit down with parents and students and, and talk about a game plan of where, mm-hmm. where they can uh, be over time. I, I've already uh, got a couple parents I've been in contact with about. Uh, possible jobs at these industries so I don't mind taking a phone call on my cell phone that's great shoot me an email I love to sit down and let's let's get the future planned out for your kid or at least what the opportunities are for them Um, that's that's part of my job that's that's great I want to promote heart County industry all I can I'm a hometown guy I grew up here I love it here you are too and uh, I just want to give back to my community and hopefully some of these kids that are coming up now We'll want to do the same thing, Brooks. Okay. Well, I want to thank Brooks Muber for being on our show. I want to thank also Wes Bailey, Heart Communications, Tina Howard, and we will see you next time on Money Talks.